Well, welcome back to the Pro Ricky exclusive channel and thank you for joining me. Um, in our last talk, we found out that the woman was seduced, beguiled and deceived by evil forces, namely the devil, and that's how it normally works. Um, and then we went on to see that the man ate, but he ate to motivate God to help get them out of the mess. So the woman lost her immortality by deception. The man lost his immortality by sacrifice. And sacrifice is something that reminds us of Christ, excuse me, crucified. Now, <clears throat> we're going to go on now with what were the consequences for these two in the original, um, original humans. Uh, and we'll see what we can find out about what happens to people who ruin their relationships. The first thing we see that the eyes of both of them were opened. Um, it's funny how confronting it is when things go wrong in a relationship. Very confronting, very revealing. And your whole thought patterns and processes and your nervous system, everything changes because you just want to get things sorted out as quickly as you can. And if there's a third party involved as, well, you've got Satan on one side and God on the other here, um, it becomes very stressful. And you all know this turns a lot of people to drugs and alcohol and other ways in which they want to try and deal with it. But none of them are all that good. Um, you have to try and find another way. But one thing's for sure, all of a sudden your nervous system is alive and awake. You're finding it hard to sleep. Um, it's difficult to concentrate. You're running into fatigue. Um, all sorts of problems start to arise. As a matter of fact, this is the first indication that the aging process has begun. Because that's what happens, guys, when women lose their, well, change their mind, lose their way, meet somebody else, and all this kind of behavior. Um, the clock, the aging clock, seems to speed up. And it's very hard to hold yourself together when you've been led to believe one thing and now it's all going in the opposite direction. But this is why we've got to understand female nature. Female nature can... If it's provoked, if there's resentment and unresolved issues that are building up in her heart that you're not prepared to be aware of to prevent, you'll find yourself in all sorts of situations. And yes, your eyes will be opened. I could tell you things that I've seen that you would not believe. And that's why I'm talking about this stuff. Yep. You're, have you ever had your eyes opened? Is that something that you could say has happened to you. You've had a situation where, oh my God, um, your eyes are open, but it just wasn't what you wanted to see. This is what female nature has the capabilities of. One of the things they don't teach us guys when we're growing up is that relationships for the most part don't work. Women get bored. They get um, hypergamous. Hypergamous being... Um, this kind of thing, where they have a good man, right? Well, you don't think you could do better than Superman, could you? And we get, I wonder if I can do better. That does come up in a woman's mind, and this is what causes a lot of the trouble. They don't even know they've got hypergamy. Um, and once hypergamy starts to be triggered, probably, see, this is where a lot of guys bring themselves undone. You cannot pedestalize a woman. She doesn't want to be pedestalized. Women know that they're pains in the asses, okay, for, for all good intention. If you let a woman start to take over, you will see a being that otherwise would not have been. See, you're not right, you're not directing her down the right path by your masculinity. If you've got a woman that's just a bully, and I've seen these fucking bullies, they don't wash up, they don't clean up, the bloke's running around wiping their asses and everything else, and they're, they're just popping around and flitting around like they own the world, and they're just dumbbells, um, bullies, 
women with balls, I call them. They may as well have balls. Um, just lazy, slothful, blaming the man that they're lonely and he's not doing enough and he can't do any more. You've got to get out of that. Just get out of it. Leave. Give the, give the person what they want and that's space. Give them all the space they want, which brings us to the next point. You cannot have one-itis, they call it in the red pill community, one-itis. Do not have one-itis. That means, and let, look, I'm not talking to married people here that are committed and, and are happy with that. I'm talking, to, and there are, ele are elements of this that you can apply, but you don't want to be trifling with your marriage unnecessarily. Um, stick to what works. But for the ones that are battling it out, trying to get themselves in a situation where they can have a normal relationship, one-itis isn't going to be doing you much good. You've got to spin the plate. Um, you know, have yourself engaged with several women if you can. Some of you guys can't get one or don't want one. So this ain't for you, but you can learn skills that can help you build your confidence and begin to approach women in a way in which they will be interested in you. Um, and one of the ways in which you do that is by not pedestalizing or validating these women. A good way might be you see a girl at the pub or whatever and you go, gee, um, what made you pick that dress? You come off, right? You come up and start with not a compliment but the opposite. And that throws them. They, you know, they're used to blokes coming up and going, oh, fuck, you're hot. Or, God, I love that and this. And, oh, you're this and that. They're tired of that. You come up and go something like, "You should, oh, excuse me, where do you, I just don't like you. Those shoes, where did you, you know, you put a a negative spin on things, not an offensive thing, but just a negative spin on things, and it gets their mind working. And that's what women want. They don't want to be pedalized, pedestalized. They want their minds working and and running and, you know, and um, in a healthy way to keep them occupied. Once you pedestalize a woman, they become bored, they become frustrated they start to become monogamous like this uh hypergamous not monogamous hypergamous um and things just start to go wrong so spin the plate uh have options show this girl that you do have options like my girlfriend knows i got fucking plenty of options if i want them but i don't want them i want to you know bring her a life of peace and fulfillment and i'm happy to do that but if she fucking plays up she'll get what the last wife got and that was asked to leave i don't i'm not fucking around with these people i'm just not i've seen too much of it and too much time wasted and my eyes were open my eyes have been open to female nature by experience with females that's what my experience has been with females and um, boy, is it open my eyes. Women do not want to be pedestalized. They don't. They'll go for the bad boy every time. What's a bad boy? Well, the bad boy is the one that's going to tell her your fucking hair looks like shit. Um, or why, why is that like this? You, you've got to help them to question. They need correction. They want to be asking themselves. You're actually showing them where they can improve. That's what women want. They want to be able to improve, but they want an outside opinion, um, preferably someone that they're fucking attracted to. So, you know, pedestalizing these Sheilas and sulking about them and all that, mate, you need, to, you need to change some stuff. You need to have your eyes opened. Get back to the beginning, of, like at school, where, you know, who's next? What's happening now? And all this, you got all this sexy stuff going on. We had girls everywhere when we were young. And they, they were, you know, there was no harm done. So what I'm saying to you guys, let your eyes be open. Get back to your masculinity. How do I do that? Well, you start to grow. Now let's have a look what happens next. How do you grow? You listen to things like this that are going to show you. In the back of a woman's mind, it's, I wonder if I can do better. Right, and I'll, I'll we haven't got to the sex side of this yet. I'll show you some strategies that'll keep your woman so fucking interested 
by the time she starts to think, can I do better, the fucking sand in the hourglass has run out. You know, they, what I mean by that is time's gone by so quick, she don't want to do better because you're providing for her an experience that cannot, without risk of her not being able to find it again, um, enable her to do any better. That's what you want to do. You want to put this woman in a position where she is going, who the fuck is this? I ain't going to be able to do better. So you need to have your eyes open that you need to grow physically, mentally, spiritually, um, and emotionally, most of all, this is what we want. You've got to um, open your mind up a little bit emotionally and, you know, be a little bit tardy with the with your girl. Be a little bit cheeky with your girl. You know, get her thinking. You'll find that there's a side to your girl that you probably aren't seeing that she wants to express. And when someone comes along, if you're not triggering it for you, somebody fucking else will. I can guarantee you that. So it's really important that you come to that place where it's never too late. Let your eyes be open. Start to work on yourself. Give yourself space. Learn to appreciate your own person, your own time, your own space. Learn to be able to be content on your own. Women are attracted to that. Why doesn't he? Why isn't he needy? You know, build yourself up so that your cock's hard. Not just fucking flopping around you older blokes. It only takes a little bit of exercise. Um, you know, get your life in order so that when things get tough, you can rise to the occasion like a lion and get things back in order. Because things get away these days too easily because there's too many options for these women. They've got options everywhere. There's fucking blokes that don't give a shit if your marriage goes down the gurgler or not. And you've got to accept that. These women are like this. I wonder if I can do better. She's got fucking Superman ain't enough once all this starts. So the next thing we see that, happen, that happens is they knew they were naked. Now this is something that us as guys have got to understand. We've got to understand this. When it's all bare and naked, we're going to find out who's in their right fucking mind and who's not, right? And if a guy's not in his right mind, it's going to psychologically impact a woman in a way in which her values and everything um, lose their calibration. She needs to find somebody that is presenting themselves in a mind in which is masculine. It's It's got masculinity flowing through it. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, you know where you are with yourself. A lot of you guys don't know how to fucking identify with yourself. You've got... Oh, I shouldn't be swearing, but it's, this is starting to get passionate now. You know, you're not identifying with yourself if you're fucking turning up drunk or stoned or something. Nine times out of ten, if you're stoned, you're not going to perform especially you older blokes, these want, you are up against some stiff competition, guys. And we were working yesterday down at Manly and this English woman come along and the boss, I thought she owned the units and the boss pulled her up and was talking to her. And um, I was talking to her for a second. I looked her in the eyes and I said, I'm the man that men don't want their wife to meet. And she lit up. I thought, hang on, fuck, this woman's got a wedding ring on. She goes, what do you mean by that? And I told her, I said, look, lady, um, I am the man that men don't want their wife to meet. Now, I said, you need to use your imagination. And I let it go at that because I didn't want to upset the boss and got back to work. But these women, right, you can see how vulnerable they are if you've got, you know, your wits about yourself, if your eyes are open. Um, and if you know that the... You, you are going to be laid, but lay, lay bare and lay naked. Women fucking strip you down, man. They've got you stripped down in a minute. They know as soon as they see you where you're at within your frame, your masculine frame. They'll look you up and down and they'll go, yep, nah, or nah, nah, in all within seconds. And that happens to all of us. But if you're presenting yourself with fire in your eyes and fucking need for a woman in your, in coming out of your eyes, they're going to respond to that because a lot of guys couldn't care less. So if you want to put yourself up 
in the top 10%, 5%, even 1%, get your eyes open, know that you'll be laid back naked and get yourself into the place that you need to be. Look, everybody knows alcohol causes erectional dysfunction problems. And so does dope. Okay? So if you can if you really want to get on get this on, get this this into a place where your woman's not going, well can I do fucking better? You've got to do the work. You've actually got to do the work. Open your eyes. Know that you're going to be laid there. Ba- they're going to strip you, man, down. And if you don't pass the test, you just get left standing there. And somebody else will get the goodies. And then they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Well, we've got to stop and ask ourselves here, guys. What are we doing in our psyche, right? What are we sewing together in our, in our body, in our mind, in our spirit, and in our emotions, right? In a way in which we can cover ourselves from being stripped bare and naked. It's going to take work, isn't it? You're going to have to start sewing into yourself. Um, one of my mates, uh, I actually, he's a very therapeutic man. Um, I work with him at least once a month just to have therapy. I won't say his name because he prefers me not to, but um, he's on the man shakes. And I sat there and I thought, good for you. Good for you, man. You do what you got to do to get to where you need to be for that girl of yours. And he's got a fantastic wife. And you might be thinking, well, man shakes. Well, Adam McDougall, man, he had legs like tree, tree trunks. He was one of the best swingers in the NRL. Uh, he played for the Knights. I'm a Knights supporter. Um, that you could ever, ever, that ever graced the field. He played State of Origin. He played for Australia. He was a weapon. And he's come out of his career and he's, you know, interested in the health and welfare of men. And he created the man shake. And, and my mate's on it. And I'm thinking, man... You know, it's a small step, but it's a massive step towards you becoming that person that you want to be. He's prepared to do the work. And a lovely bloke from a fantastic, uh, in a fantastic marriage with a real stable family. But he's not resting on his laurels. He's opened his eyes and he's gone, hang on a sec. I'm starting to get away on myself. It's not she's starting to get away from him. It's when we start to get away on ourselves, guys. You know, and I want to build you. I want to. I want you to have confidence. I want you to sit there and go, man. This guy's right. He, you know, I need to get out and go for a walk. I need to back off on the drinking. I need to back off on the smokes. You know, I need to back off on looking at all these other women because by the time I get home, I've got no energy left to feel that way about mine. I'm just more or less going home and fucking her, and there ain't no chemistry. Um. And these are the things that you can sow in your life. I need to sit with on my own for a while and let her sit in her own for a while and give each other space to be able to come back to ourselves, figure things out, right? They sewed fig leaves together. Well, we can use that to say, well, they were figuring things out. They were, they were figuring things out together, okay? And you can do that individually. And it comes down to you building your personal skills your personal attributes within your masculine frame i'm not talking about computer fucking skills or um you know your trade skills i'm talking about you personally as a man or a woman if the women are listening to this to be the best that you can be for the love that you have and the person that you're sharing your life with and i'm telling you the rewards some of you guys might need to just out and out fast I eat one meal a day of a night with her. That's it. And I fast when I can, except on weekends. Because I've got to lose this fucking gut that I've got and the liver fat that I know I have. My liver and and systems are just not running the way it's meant to be. But by fasting, right, and you consult your doctor and make your own... I'm trained in fasting because I'm a... um, ex. Uh, 
practicing minister and that's part of what you need to do to take on some of the spiritual darkness that you're confronted with within that spiritual realm fasting is one of the most um, personally enlightening lightening and strengthening um, practices that you can apply in many different ways we won't go into fasting right now but i'm just telling you if you get it right and do it right without harming yourself consult your doctor um, if you need to um, it's one of the most powerful rejuvenating um, practices that you can do for your mind and for your body. You will find the light comes back on, right? And things start, you, you want to get things right. And when you feel that within yourself, that things are becoming right, right? You'll have moments where it just doesn't look like anything's happening at all and you're kidding yourself. But if you let that pass and you continue on, Right. If you keep on covering, 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 covering yourself, come back to yourself. Make those coverings. Right. I need. I'm going to do. The, I'm going to do. Look. I've got time. I'll do a 20 minute walk. Now I've got time. I'm going to rest and sleep. I've got time. I'm not going to have that. Whatever. I remember we were visiting um, one of our close buddies. I won't say because I don't embarrass him. But we were invited for lunch, and he was doing really well considering what happened to him and we were sitting there and he had a beer and then he i think he i don't know how it happened but the missus took the next beer off him and i thought mate listen to the and he knew he knew he's not stupid but we'll try and bluff him if we can but how good is it to have a woman there that's just going to go no and she's a fantastic woman he is blessed i'm telling you you just some of these women out there that uh, love their husbands. It's one of the most beautiful thing that you'll ever see or experience. A, a real happy, true, um, flourishing relationship. So I'm going to stop there. This is um, where we're headed with these talks. We're starting to get into some real meat and potatoes now. Just reiterating before I go. Let your eyes be open. Open your eyes to yourself not to everybody else, to yourself. If things are going bad and somebody's out of control, some woman's out of control, come back to yourself. Let it go. Don't have one-itis. There's females out there everywhere that want somebody to have for company. If you're being taken for granted, heal yourself, right, because you're probably hurt. Let yourself be healed through opening your eyes to the fact that you're being disrespected. This is out of order. She's not complying, she's not submissive, she's unruly, she's having an affair, she's seeing another bloke, she's on a phone all the time. And as for phones, just before I go, a phone's no different to another person. If somebody's sitting there on their fucking phone all the time, straighten it out or get somebody that's not. I'm fortunate, my girl's not on her phone all the time. I hate that. People just sitting there on their fucking phone when they, you know, could be socialising properly. So this is um, where I'll finish off here, guys. Uh, work together. Sow into your life together to make things the way that they need to be so that you're covering all bases so that the devil can't jump out and fuck you or your relationship. This is Pro One Theologist um, on the YouTube exclusive channel talking to tradies and men and women about the things that matter in life, the old-fashioned values. Um, like, subscribe, and share the channel. Um, and remember, there's a Facebook channel which shows our brickwork, and sometimes these talks are on there. Like and share and follow the channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.